Pray with me. Come to us, Holy Spirit, and move among us. Inspire us, speak to us today. Speak to us so we might hear your voice, and we might be shaped as your people. People of boldness, and people of honesty, people of truth and growth. In the name of Jesus, amen. So today is the last day in a series we've been doing for uh, the past month or so called It's Time for a Change, Less of This and More, than that, more of That. And part of what we've been addressing in this series is how we experience and deal with the changes in our life. Change is always happening. Sometimes that change is for the better. Sometimes it's for the worse. Uh, we've been asking ourselves this question. What does God want more of in your life? And what does God want less of? What does God want more of in our world? And what does God want less of? So I hope today or in the past few weeks you've maybe discerned one or two things that you've discerned that God wants less of in your life, and maybe you can commit yourself to trying to bring less of that into your life. And maybe you've discerned one or more things that you think God wants more of in your life. And maybe you can commit yourself today to dwelling in that and bringing more of that into your life. In our scripture readings, we jumped today from Isaiah last week uh, to Jeremiah today. So we're jumping ahead about 80 years. Uh, when we read our reading from Isaiah last week, we were reading about the siege of Jerusalem by the Assyrians around 701 B.C. And now we're in the early parts of Jeremiah's ministry, you know, maybe 620 B.C., something like that. So we're jumping ahead a little bit, but we're still in the southern kingdom, uh, the kingdom of Judah, or in Jerusalem. Uh, both Isaiah and Jeremiah were southern prophets. Of course, by this time, in Jeremiah's time, the northern kingdom has been destroyed by the Assyrians, so there isn't even uh, a northern kingdom to talk about at, at this point. But in those 80 years, the Assyrians, who were the big threat last week, have kind of uh, been eclipsed by the Babylonians. And so now Jeremiah is the prophet in Jerusalem who is warning the people that the Babylonian Empire is going to come into Jerusalem and destroy the city, destroy the temple, and is going to take the people prisoner into exile in Babylon. Sometimes Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet because he oversaw this, uh, this troublesome time, this time when the people are going to be taken into exile and the city of Jerusalem will be destroyed. But just to give you an idea of where I'm going today, uh, I think if we ask this question, what does God want less of in our life, what does God want more of, this reading from Jeremiah uh, reveals to us a God who wants uh, fewer excuses in our life and more boldness. A God who wants fewer illusions in our life and wants more honest growth. So first of all, uh, God wants fewer excuses and more boldness. The first part of our reading for today, if you look at it, the, the section from Jeremiah, the first chapter of Jeremiah, is the call story of the prophet. And there are many call stories throughout the Bible. Uh, there's the call of Moses at the burning bush, where God calls him to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. There's the call of Isaiah in the temple. There's the call of the first disciples in the Gospels. And after you look at a few of these stories, you start to see a few patterns. And there's, there's one that goes kind of like this. God calls a person, they come up with a few excuses, and God responds by reassuring them with promises of presence and promises of uh, equipping them for that ministry. So for example, in the call of Moses at the burning bush, uh, Moses Hears the voice of God from this burning bush, and uh, he says, I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And God reassures him, saying, I will be with you. I will help the people trust you. And he says, I'll let Aaron speak for you. So God calls. Moses comes up with excuse after excuse, and God says, I will be with you. 
I promise to help you in this. And so, likewise, when Isaiah is called in the temple, he says, you know, woe, woe is I, uh, I am a man of unclean lips, and God touches a coal to his lips, and he's able to, he's purified and able to speak the word of the Lord. And so, after you've seen that pattern, today's story kind of follows the same pattern. Uh, God comes to Jeremiah and says, I'm going to give you a message to give to the people. And what does Jeremiah say? I don't speak well, and I'm too young. Those are, those are his two uh, excuses. And the next part of the pattern uh, follows as well. God says, I will give you the words to say. When I say go, you should go, because I will be with you, and I will give you the words to say. I don't know who said it first, but I've heard it said that uh, God does not call the equipped. God equips the call. So it's not like, God, in other words, God is not like an Ivy League school. There's not a standardized test for prophets where God uh, chooses the best of the class. God isn't keeping track of the prophet's GPA. God isn't keeping track of our GPAs. Instead, God uh, chooses the unlikely person to do God's work. In fact, the Bible tells us that God chooses the weak in the world to shame the strong. God chooses those who are foolish to shame the wise. So it's actually like God is kind of like the reverse of an Ivy League school. God uh, chooses uh, the person who does the worst on the test to do God's work. And so the question for us then is, what's our excuse? What's my excuse? What's your excuse? Because God continues to call people like us. God continues to call you. Each one of us is an ambassador for Christ, someone who goes out and shares the presence of Christ in the world. God says that each one of us is light for the world, in a world filled with darkness. We are all called to go and share God's light with others. God continues to call, and if we're following the pattern, I imagine that a few of us have uh, excuses popping up too. Maybe our excuses aren't Jeremiah's. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't speak well, I'm too young. But maybe we have other ones, you know, I, I don't have time, or that makes me uncomfortable, or what if people don't respond well, you know, maybe I'm, I'm too young, I'm too old, I don't have the right training, all those kinds of things. But the God of this story is revealing to us that we need fewer excuses and more boldness, because God is with us. <clears throat> so whatever it is that your excuses are, God gives us more boldness today. It reminds me of that Sunday school song we sang in church a while ago. It's called, Be Bold, Be Strong, The Lord thy God is with thee. Be not afraid, because God is with us, just as God was with Jeremiah. So this story also reveals to us a God who wants fewer illusions and more honesty, more honest growth. In that same section where we read about Jeremiah's call, we hear that Jeremiah is called to both uh, tear down and to build up, to pluck up and to plant. And it's kind of a twofold call, but they're also, they go together, they're one and the same. That in order for something to be built up, God needs to tear something down first. And in order for something new to grow, something else needs to be plucked up out of the people. And so in this temple sermon of Jeremiah, we see a prophet who is tearing down, but not just being destructive for destruction's sake. A prophet who is tearing down illusions so that the truth can be built up. Plucking up falseness so that the truth can be planted. Jeremiah is confronting the people by saying that you think that Jerusalem was safe just because it has a temple in it. There's this kind of tendency sometimes where we take God's blessing as an entitlement, that we think that when God has promised to be with us, that that means that we're special not because of God, but because of who we are. And I think he's uh, poking a hole in that illusion. He's also poking a hole in the illusion that uh, they can live one way in the temple, and then can go out and live another way outside of the temple walls. He says, you know, you worship God in the temple one way, but then you go out and you oppress the widow and the orphan and the stranger. If we remember our, our mission statement that true worship is to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly 
Uh, that's kind of what Jeremiah is telling to the people here. He's saying, uh, you say one thing in the temple, but then you go out and you don't do justice. You don't love kindness. You don't walk humbly. So he's tearing down these illusions so that the truth, true worship, true uh, relationship with God can be built up, can be planted. Uh, it kind of um, reminds me of a story, actually, from uh, Peter Marshall. This is a book from our church library. It's actually a book that's in a lot of church libraries, if you start to look for it. Um, it's called A Man Called Peter. It's about Peter Marshall, who was an early 20th century pastor out in D.C. He was the pastor of New York Avenue Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. He was also the chaplain of the U.S. Senate for a time. He died kind of young, and then his uh, wife, Catherine, wrote this book called A Man Called Peter, which was actually turned into a movie in the mid-1950s. But I heard a story about Peter Marshall uh, that there was one time where he was preaching a sermon about the biblical practice of tithing, uh, which is the idea that you give your first fruits, you know, 10% of your income or something to God. Uh, so he was preaching about this teaching from the Old Testament that people should uh, give their first fruits to God, that people should be planning to give about 10% of their uh, blessings, of their gifts, of their money to God. When a, a guy caught him, one of the members of the church, asked him on the way out, can I come and see you this week and talk to you? And uh, the man came to his office and said, you know, I heard your sermon. It was uh, kind of making me a little uncomfortable. Uh, and I didn't really like it very much. I didn't like how much you were talking about money. Uh, and part of it for me is that I've tithed my whole life. I've always given 10% to the church. Uh, but now recently I've got uh, a promotion and a significant raise. And when I did the math, that you know, I was giving so much money to the church that I just didn't feel comfortable with it. Uh, so I, I'm not giving my full 10% anymore because I got this promotion and I got this raise. And uh, kind of went on and on for a little bit. And uh, finally, uh, Pastor Marshall kind of got a little smirk on his face and says, you know what, why don't we pray about it? And so they, they bowed their heads and uh, Pastor Marshall prayed. He said, I want you to help this man, God, with his problem. Please decrease his salary so he can meet his tithe. <laughs> I don't know what the man said after that. But I think it's that work of kind of poking holes in our illusions that, uh, you know, in this case it was around generosity. The generosity meant a certain percentage of the generosity, that there was such a thing as being too generous. Um, if that is that really generosity. So I, mean, I think that's part of the work of a prophet, is tearing down illusions so that truth can be planted, so that, uh, so that uh, the truth can be built up in God's church. And so I think Jeremiah gives us this message of boldness, of truth, um, and part of all that connects to our life right now is we're having this emphasis on storytelling and story sharing. And I'll be saying more about this, but I, you might have noticed that I posted a few questions around our church that I'm hoping will kind of fill up um, over the next few weeks. Um, because I think as we think about how God is calling us as a church, calling us as people, we need a, a new sense of boldness about how we tell our story, how we are like for the world. Uh, we had that survey a couple weeks ago of... Uh, how we share our story, and the image that I got, because uh, Lee helped tabulate the responses, um, was there's a lot of good things happening here, but we don't always take the time to tell our stories to one another or to other people. And so I'm hoping that we can grow bold and honest about the stories that we do have. There was a, a study done by Lifeway Ministries, and a man named Tom Reed. And what they found is that there are uh, they did this study of unchurched people, people who are not connected to churches, people who didn't grow up in the church. And they found that 8 out of 10 unchurched people would come with a friend, family, or co-worker to church if they were invited. At least that's what they said to the survey. At the same time, they asked the people in the pews, how many of you have invited someone uh, to church in the last year? And they found that only 2% had. 
So on the one hand, they had 8 out of 10 people who said, you know what, if someone asked me who I cared about to go to church with them, I would probably go. And yet they had only 2% of people who had actually invited someone in the last year. So part of what I'm hoping we can learn from our scripture, from this study of storytelling, is that we can be bold uh, to be inviting, to be welcoming, to be inclusive. That we have a story to tell. That if we think we're, we don't speak well, or we're too young, or we're too old, or we don't have enough time, or any of those other excuses, that God can respond to us by saying, you can be bold because I am with you. You can be bold because I have blessed you. The last thing I want to say about uh, today's uh, reading is you'll notice that our gospel reading is the story of Jesus uh, chasing the money changers out of the temple. And we're kind of at this pivot point in our readings where we're moving from the stories of the Old Testament to the stories of Jesus. And we're moving into the season of Advent. And this temple sermon by Jeremiah points forward to Jesus because when Jesus cleanses the temple, he quotes the prophet Jeremiah by saying, uh, you've turned my father's house into a den of thieves. You're hiding out in the temple like a bunch of thieves. And so there's a way in which Jeremiah is pointing us forward to what's coming next. Pointing us forward to the coming of Christ. It's time for a change, and Jesus brings about that change in the world and in us. So may God grant you more boldness today. May God tear down our illusions, and may God build up the truth. And may we all prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ, the one who changes us into the kind of people that God created us to be.